WLAN security. Okay, so this is the forward here. The brain used the radio as a transmission media, similar to the LAN. Sites on the WLAN share channel so that each site can easily access to the network, so without the space limitation. So the brain security has always been a focus in the industry. The wireless in, uh, authentication and the encryption technologies are constantly uh, evolving and being enhanced. So far, the WLAN system has a series of security mechanisms to meet the requirement in the virus scenario. So in this case, we will get the, uh, the grab of WLAN security in terms of WLAN security the security tricks and uh, the, uh, some of the security technologies. Understand the significance of WLAN security planning. Describe common WLAN security tricks. The legal principle of WIDS, WIPS. List common authentication and encryption technologies. And the last, describe the user security access technology. WLAN security overview. Wireless local area network for shared WLAN offers a user a free network access way compared with a traditional wire access. There's no restriction. The WLAN provider the user access without restriction on the location of cable or the port. So we can move anywhere uh, that, uh, that we want to. So the WLAN allows the user to access the network for the office or entertainment anytime. Okay, anywhere such as the uh, office building, airport, waiting hall, and hotel. So why WLAN network protections? Prevent the information theft. So what is information interception by using the software? So communication, content, decryption. To prevent the unauthorized access, okay, unauthorized uh, user access, unauthorized resource access, okay, we based on these two. Provide the stable, uh, efficient wireless access. Unstable signal caused by the interference, such as the raw IP. Unavoidable WLAN due to denial of service attack. Okay, the security tricks. They have DOS attack. The address uh, spoofing attack with WEP protocol, raw device intrusion, and the data theft. Then the second, WIDS and the IPS principle. WIP, uh, IDS and the IPS, wireless intrusion detection systems and the prevention systems. So to control the user access security, they have the link authentication user access authentication and the data encryption. And the last one is the service security. WLAN network is vulnerable to threats from the man in the middle attack, ad hoc network and the DOS, the raw device and attack post, serious security threats to the uh, enterprise network. So all the attack can be come from the downloading right now. Last time the attack all come from the external and now the attack can come from the intranet. WIDS is used to monitor the running status of the network and the system according to the security policy. Analyze the user activity, determine the uh, in, uh, intrusion event type, and detect the emailing uh, network. So basically for this feature, it's used to scanning and monitor all the traffic. For the WIPS, the prevention systems, so monitor the network in the real time to proactively defend against the detection intrusion. So based on the uh, intrusion, uh, the detection that we already ran, so the WIPS can able to prevent certain type of the attacking. AP can work in two modes, normal and the monitor. Transmit common WLAN services if the air scan is disabled. Okay, when we don't enable any S scan, so I just purely want to provide the um, the normal service access for all my client. Transmit WLAN service data and provide the monitoring function. 
if X scan is enabled. So monitoring may affect the WLAN service data transmission. Then the next, the monitor mode. Provide the monitoring function but do not transmit WLAN service data. So this is just purely doing the monitor. The raw device identification process. The AP report information about surrounding device. So start. The AP will go to scan the surrounding and try to identify all the device. So first, they try to categorize all the device first. So this device is belong to the AP, a wireless bridge. Is it the SDA or the ad hoc? So let's start from the AP and the wireless bridge. So now they already categorize this kind of the wireless access is the AP. So okay, this device, the AP, is it this uh, local AP connected to the AC? Currently this AP connect to my controller or not? If this AP never connect to my controller, I will assume this one is the unauthorized AP. Okay, so the last one I'm going to check. Is it the AP in the wireless? If the AP is not in the wireless, then that means this is the raw AP. Then the next one for the STA. So they're going to check. Right now the STA is connected to the AC. If no, you see the uh, STA right here is connected to another AP. If yes, then this is a raw client. Right now this PCI is not connected to my uh, controller at all. So that's why I will assume this STA is belong to the some of un 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 unauthorized user. And the last, the ad hoc. The ad hoc is always the raw device. The monitor AP work scan channel to monitor all the A02.11 frame sent from surrounding wireless device. Based on the A02.11 MAC frame type, the monitor AP can identify the type of surrounding wireless device and further identify raw device through the raw AP client detection process. Okay, if we're going to change the AP become the monitor AP. So that's mean right now this AP can't able to provide any services to the access user. So it's just purely for scanning purpose. So they scan the surrounding. So they can able to monitor the raw AP, the client at home. The at home is happening to those PCs running the, uh, like the infrared, Bluetooth, the point-to-point -point connections all belong to the at home. Okay, and also the wireless bridge when the AP running the WDS. So WIPS support content, uh, the containment on the raw AP, the raw, D, uh, raw client and the ad hoc device. So when they're able to detect all the, uh, the unauthorized access from the device here, so this is not the authorized um, device. So this monitor AP, we're going to start to send the, the association frame they go to ask all of those clients leave the association. I will not going to connect with all of those devices. Okay, they'll do this one automatically after we enable the WIPS. Okay, other functions supported by WIDS, WIPS. The threat attack detection through WIDS. Okay, spoofing attack detection through WIDS. So basically the WIDS can able to detect all of those attacking the fraud attack, the spoofing attack, the weak IP detections, and defend against the brute force PSK cracking. AP authentication technology. MAC address authentication by default. So how the AC authenticate the AP? So previously I did mention uh, when we're doing the, I show the configuration on the web. So they support the MAC authentication the serial authentication and the non-authentication. So this is for the security purpose. Then the authentication free wireless function. So we also can create the AP wireless. You can just um, simplify to register all your AP address and put into the wireless. So that's mean this kind of AP, right? It doesn't require to perform any authentication. So when I check on the MAC address, the MAC address is inside the wireless. 
So this AP is always the authorized AP. Okay, so the why this can use for the WI, uh, sorry, the WDS and the MES. WN user access security. WN security involves the following the user authentication, prevent unauthorized user from accessing the WLAN. So all the user have to perform the authentication first before they access the WLAN and the data encryption. So after the user can able to connect to the um, WLAN, so the next thing we need to do is we need to make sure all the data, the information sent from a user is protect. Okay, all the information must be encrypted. So Huawei actually support the foreign security policy, the web, okay, open system and the shared key authentication, plus the WEP encryption. WPA, you can using the PSK, the pre-shared key, EAP authentication. The encryption, they have two different formats, TKIP and the CCMP. WPA2 is the enhanced version of the WPA. Okay, they're both doing the same authentication and also the encryption. And the last one, the Wabi. Wabi is using the pre-shared pre key or we can using the certificate based authentication. Okay, for the encryption, it, using the ECC. Then WEP. It's used the RC4 algorithm, so it's easy to decrypt. Okay, this happening to the last time the uh, the encryption algorithm. So when they're using the RC4, WEP, uh, WEP use the static key, which is uh, difficult to distribute and maintain. In WEP open system authentication, the user can access WLAN without the authentication because it's open. Okay, the, uh, the user doesn't require to perform any authentication. WEP Open System Authentication plus the Web Portal Authentication. Yes, so this is the most common use right now. So if you want to do the uh, Cathy Portal Authentication for all the user, you have to set the authentication type become WEP. Okay, so basically for this kind of authentication, it's using for the guest access scenario. Can we create this one for the guest access? WEP is not recommended in other scenario. WPA, WPA2. Okay, they both is uh, very similar. They both support PSK and EAP authentication modes. So they both support TKIP and CCMP encryption. So this is for the data encryption. The precaution. In the pre uh, pre check key, the authentication mode. So both then does not require an AAA server. It doesn't require. So and suitable for the small and the medium size enterprise. In the EAP authentication mode, the WPA WPA2 require an AAA server. Okay, that's a different. For the pre shared key, the PSK, you don't need to have the AAA server only in the EAP you need to do the uh, you need to have the AAA server and provide the high security applicable to the medium and the large size enterprise so at the same time they also support the, the EAP type such as the uh, the PEAP and the EAP TRS and the last to deploy WPA WPA2 on A02.11 network, you must configure CCMP encryption. If other encryption modes are configured, the network will be rolled back to the non A02.11N network. WLAN authentication infrastructure, identity authentication, and the key management. In WPI, the privacy infrastructure. This one is used for the data encryption, uh, authentication, and replay the attack defense. The advantage, the bi-directional 
uh, identity authentication. So they do the uh, authentication on the both side. The digital certificate has identity information and well developed authentication protocol. So this protocol is definitely different than the uh, those of the aggression that uh, sorry the EIP that create on the WPA. Okay, it's different. SDA in some country might not support WABI. Okay, because this kind of authentication right, uh, they actually create uh, on the state uh, in the China. So some of the SDA our end devices might not support. So other WS security protection mode. So we have the SDA blacklist and the whitelist. So for this one, we can configure the MAC address to block the, the access user using the blacklist or the whitelist. Then user isolation. So to prevent all the user can able to access to each other, so we can isolate the user. The MAC address authentication. Okay, I can base on the MAC address and authorize the user using the MAC address. Or we can use the web portal. And the last one, any spoofing technology such as the DSCP snooping, the dynamic ARP inspection, DI, and also the IP source guard, okay, IPSG. Now, this is a blacklist and a whitelist. The blacklist and the whitelist can be used to filter the SDA to control the SDA access. The SDA blacklist and the whitelist can be deployed based on the AP. Okay, so maybe we have a multiple of the AP, and this AP, right? Uh, sorry, um, the black, uh, the blacklist and the whitelist. I don't want to apply to all the AP. So you also can based on the AP and apply the the whitelist and also the blacklist. Okay, which one have and which one you don't have. And this kind of services, the feature, you also can deploy based on the service set. So maybe this uh, PC, okay, maybe I have a SDA 1, SDA 2. So when they want to try to connect to the Huawei number 1, it's blacklist. But on the another Huawei number 2 SSID, I never set the blacklist. So these users can still connect to another SSID. Okay, so this one will be based on the service set. Then the last, only one blacklist or the whitelist can be deployed on an MP. You cannot using blacklist and the whitelist at the same time. Okay, they only allow you to choose one. So when starting, you check the SDA access control. So which one that we enable, whitelist or the blacklist? So if we enable the white uh, whitelist, so now they're going to check. Did we have configured any MAC address inside the whitelist? If yes, okay, now they're going to check. Okay, if yes, uh, the SDA is inside the, the whitelist, then the PC can go online. If no, okay, right now my PC is not inside the whitelist, then it will to check. Is the source MAC address in the whitelist? Okay, if yes, they can go online. If no, they reject. The blacklist will be very simple. If the uh, MAC address is inside the blacklist, of course they will go to deny. Okay, it's just by this way. MAC address authentication based on the MAC address of STA. So the STA inside the, uh, the MAC address authentication. So I already uh, pre configured this MAC address on the uh, controller. So when this PC want to connect to the SSID, right? they actually doesn't require to put any authentication password. They can bypass it. Okay, they can always connect it without entering any password because they're already inside the, the MAC address auto, uh, the, uh, authorized. So support the guest VLAN and the user group authorization functions. Support the cooperation with other authentication mode. Okay, like WPA. PSK. Then the next one is the web portal authentication. Support the built-in and the external portal authentication. 
Of course, the Huawei AC also built in with the built-in portal, so we can use the Huawei built-in portal to perform the web portal authentication. Or maybe uh, on the company, they already have another server, can provide the same services, so we just select the external portal from the controller there. Okay, then the user will going to redirect to the external portal. So this one can support the layer 2 and also the layer 3 authentication. Support the keep alive and user authentication management function. And the user can do the self-registration. The next one is the Andy's moving technology. So the first one, DSCP snooping. So it's used to defend against the bogus DSCP server attack and the DOS attack. Defend against DSCP packet fraud attack and the spoofing attack. And the next is the defend against the non DSCP user attack. Okay, so this is the feature for the DSCP snooping. Then the next one, the DI. DI. So defend against the ARP uh, spoofing attack and the fraud attack. So this one always have to uh, enable together with the DSCP snooping. You cannot just enable the DI itself. Okay, they will not allow you to do that. So uh, if you want to enable this defend, you have to start the snooping first. Okay, then you can enable this. The last one is the IPSG. Defend against the IP address spoofing attack. And the last one, camera acquisition and the user authority management. The camera control data can be encrypted using the DTLS. Okay, the camera control data, because uh, the control data by default they actually uh, doesn't using the DTLS. We have to enable that. Okay, if you want to protect your information. So we've enabled the DTLS can prevent the control message delivered by the AC from being intercepted. So it supports the following authentication mode. Certificate based authentication. So the AC and the AP are delivered with the certificate. Or we can use the pre shared key. So the default password. Uh, after I mean after we enable the DDS and we're going to using the pre shared key. So the default password for the Huawei controller is using this. The Huawei set CWP. Okay, and uh, of course the password we can modify it later. VIP pays um, user isolation. So the VIP base, once we ID enable, all the user connected to the same AP here, they are not allowed to form the communication. They can't able to reach to each other. So this one is used to ensure the user service security and uh, the charging accuracy. Then the next, the user group base, the user isolation. So the group-based user isolation, we have two different types. The first one is called in-the-group isolation. So when the user belongs to two different groups, or just make it simple, uh, this is the two different SSID. Okay, we assume this is two different SSID. So these two different SSID, the in-the-group isolation, this one, they are not allowed to form the communication. So if you connect to Huawei one, and I'm connected to the Huawei 2 SSID. So these two users, they can't able to ping to each other. Okay, you'll be fair. Then the other one, intra-group isolation. So once this one is already enabled, okay, this one is belong to the, uh, the same group. So the same group user, after applying the intra-group isolation, even the same user in the, uh, sorry, the different user in the same SSID, they are not allowed to reach to each other, okay, they will be totally blocked. And the last one, they can combine these two together. Okay, summary. WS Security Overview. 
Okay, I did explain what is the OE on the security and the WIDS, WIPS principle, user access security, and the last one is cap encryption and the user authority management.